everybody, and welcome back to the Chaluminati Podcast, episode 114. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by my other two hosts, Jesse Cox and Alex Fasciani, the Dukes of LA. <laughs> That's us. That's us, baby. We run this town. The, the Dukes. Dukes of LA. Actually, we you don't come run talk this to town. Us. We pay homage and are loyal to the king of LA, and we yeah. just control land that he owns. Yeah. There. yeah. Vince yeah. Scully. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we we run Vin Scully's city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like more managers than we are, you know, owners. <laughs> you you need some in this town, you talk to me. <laughs> and then I'll talk to someone above me. I will make it known with the leadership that your request has been made. <laughs> Um, man, I am so I'm so giddy for this episode, gentlemen. Um, this is something that has been on my my bucket list for this show since we started the show. It's a necessary uh, set of episodes that we're going to do just as necessary as Patreon.com. You're one step Illuminati you're one pod. step ahead of me, Matt. This is exactly what I was going to say, because it is, you know, it is necessary that you head to Patreon.com slash Chiluminati pod, because you know what? We need you. Because if we can't put out an episode every week, what are we even doing with our lives? You know what I mean? How if we can't come here on Sundays and get weird with each other and and make some weird story for you guys to listen up. to, make some weird story up. Is that what you're about to say? <laughs> I took I read it online and then I copy it from several articles and I plagiarize it and then I read it. And that's how I do it. Uh, but if you want to come and you want and you want to get <laughs> ticket pre-sales, merch every month, art, Discord tags of various hues and shades, head to patreon.com slash pod because not only will you get all that, but if you contribute at the proper level, you also get 15 more minutes of this excellent show every single time. Every single time you're listening to the show and you wish, oh God, I wish there was more of it. There is. And it's available at patreon.com. Slash Shulmanati Pod. And if you already are a patron and you still want more show, <laughs> hit me up on PayPal and I'll let y'all see what I can do. Maybe I'll record even more. Maybe That's unsanctioned I'll, by yeah. Shulmanati. Yeah. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll record a little podcast or whatever the fuck you want. How about that? You know? <laughs> Foxy at gmail.com on PayPal. Find me there. Always grind. Always grind, Alex. I respect the hustle. Hey, hey, hey. I need it. I need it. I love it. We're the Dukes of LA. Come on. We don't get paid very much. It's not an elected position. Uh, so before we really dive in, I need to, I'm going to have to ask you both to do me a favor. This episode, you have to put away the snarky pants, which I'm sure can't actually go away, but you got to put on your believer pants today because a lot of the things I'm going to tell you are going to seem insane, Mathis? possibly fictional, Mathis? possibly insane, but, but, <laughs> but I promise you next week, it will all culminate in a historical way that I think you, Jesse, will genuinely appreciate. Let me eventually right. on a later episode, <laughs> I will no part explain three. about a house that's very dilapidated and what you need to know about that. I don't like the way that this show is headed where no. there's always like, all right. And now no. 18 episodes where you just have to believe. And no, then no, no. one where I reveal it was all a lie. You I need what? you to know, Mathis. I, I think when you learn what this is about, you you will probably understand why it's necessary to a degree. All right. Because listen, in the world of the weird that we this podcast so often frequent. <laughs> I can't wait to very, figure out what the, if this is something I know, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to just sit here shaking no, my I, head. I, I, want you you. To, I want you to make sure you say everything you need to say here. OK. So very few places in the world seem to have an intersection of legend, paranormal, aliens, actual history. Even when we discussed Skinwalker Ranch as a possible flap in reality, it lacked most of what we're about to discuss today. In the land of the occult, alien lore, even dipping into history, few come close to the importance that the fabled city of Atlantis carried millennia after its first mention by Plato. Fabled, Atlant- fabled, but real, right? Yeah, yes, we're going to exactly correct yeah. today. Today in today's episode, it's 100 percent real for the purposes of how we're breaking this thing up. There's so many um, fables because it's such a real place. Exactly. Yeah. And there's there's an absolute definitive source to where you can get this shit. Um, the world of uh, the, the world of lost civilization and fabled cities is actually 
a fascinating one. I didn't personally think I'd be pulled as deep into it as I was when I first started this little uh, research. It's filled with would-be treasure hunters, amateur journalists and reporters looking for their big break, all the way to the scientifically minded looking to dispel or solidify rumors of said city's existence, and with it, enormous pride. When it comes to Atlantis specifically, however, there seems to be a very definitive line. Those who believe Atlantis was an actual real city, a civilization, trading hub somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, whether it be those, uh, those fruitful trading hubs or not, um, those were where the true Atlanteans, the seed for all future civilizations, would disperse through diffusion theory, which we'll talk more about next, uh, like at the end of this episode and next week. Of those who wholeheartedly believe that Atlantis was a story created from the imagination of one of the greatest philosophers to ever exist, Plato. Before you write this off completely, though, the difference between something like Atlantis and, say, proving ghosts or that Skinwalker Ranch is actually real or there's an actual such thing as a reality flap, there's actual grounds for finding a city of legend like Atlantis, unlike something historic to point back to and prove something like Skinwalker Ranch can happen. The example I'm going to use for this is the city of Troy. For years, academics and scientists did not believe, and they were convinced that Troy, much like Atlantis, was a city in a story created simply to teach a lesson or carrying on a historical tale that had changed so much over the years, it was now passed on that that truth was more or less lost to the parable that Troy was supposed to be. However, a man by the name of Heinrich Schleimann in Germany could not be convinced the stories in Homer's tales weren't based on actual cities, and in time, dedicated his entire life to discovering the lost cities and treasures that were told in Homer's tales. To make an extremely long story short, because I'm not going to sit here and break down his whole history, the important bits is in 1871, Schleiman and his team began digging in Hisserlik, which is an ancient city in Turkey that they believed could be Troy following hints that they were reading through Homer's tales. They would spend three years excavating this site, and the day before the digging was to commence in 1873, or finish rather, in 1873, after having discovered nine buried cities, each layered on top of one another in that site, he, under the dirt, finally saw a glint of gold. After digging further, he and his team discovered large treasures, statues, and plenty of remains that placed the site as what is now known as the City of Troy, no longer a fable or a legend. Schleiman would become known to some as the founder of modern archaeology, and just like that, everything once believed to be true about the mythical Troy was changed. And while Schleiman was certainly an important man in history, I do wish to point out how destructive he also was. You have to understand Schleiman wasn't a scientist or a teacher. He was a man with money and a drive. And in his relentless search for Troy over the two to three years he was digging in that site, he would, without a second thought, blow away with explosives city after city after settlement layered on top of each other, destroying forever who knows how much and how many ruins, artifacts, pieces of history, just so he could get to what he believed to be Troy. Uh, so while he was definitely important, he was just kind of chaotic and was haphazard about how he did everything. All that to say that there is precedent to using old texts that were once thought to be stories to find ancient cities and civilizations. However, as we'll learn, there are some important differences and distinctions between the discovery of Troy and what we're covering now as Atlantis. Covering every aspect of Atlantis, every theory and every possible belief is pretty much impossible unless we want to strap in for a 10-parter where you're likely going to end up even more confused than you were by the end of the Greenstone trilogy. So what I've decided to do <laughs> is break Atlantis Poor down Greenstone. into two parts. Poor Greenstone. <laughs> Listen, it's still it's still joke worthy a little bit it's for now. It's a three parter. And it's a three parter. Don't you that understand? Hasn't yet. I get it. I get it. We're only doing two parts. We're breaking Atlantis down into two parts. The first part here is what I'm going to call the grand fantasy of Atlantis. The most popular beliefs among the truest of true believers, and to the best of my ability, describe to you the future society that was Atlantis and how without its existence, we would not exist as we do today. And next week in the second part will be a much more historical breakdown of Atlantis, its origins, where Atlantis might actually be if it ever existed as it was written at all. And then and we'll contact that, Michael Ripperas from... <laughs> 
the from the video game apocalypse and have him come back and tell him about a house. So before you begin us uh, down yes. this path. Yes. Let it be known that mm-hmm. uh, Atlantis is fascinating just yes, on its I own. Agree. So I can't hate you for an Atlantis episode. Very excited to be involved in whatever the hell you're about to say. But <laughs> I think the thing that makes this different from Troy or uh, what is it? Mohenjo Daro, I think is what it's yep, called. That's another one. Um, yeah. Or uh, even, you know, uh, Encore Wat or even uh, Machu Picchu or, you know, the place that I can't remember the name of. That's where they filmed Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. <laughs> oh, uh, the Petra City. Yes. Yeah. 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 All those places <laughs> were very similar to what you're talking about, like lost cities. Even yeah. it's if you want to get like really blown away, look up what Chichen Itza used to look like before they just uncovered it all. It just <laughs> Dude, like that, big shit is, of- that shit is amazing. Yeah, that is it, honestly like mad. I can't believe it's like a movie. It's like Hellboy yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like crazy. hundreds of feet of earth over giant ass pyramids. And it's crazy that yeah. they dug all that stuff out. So like I get that lost cities can exist. In fact, sure. I'd be willing to wager like, sure, there probably might have been in Atlantis. <laughs> what you're about to do today, where you're like, <laughs> and then they had flying cars and great battles. Like you're about to take us into a place of fantasy. And I want to let you know that I know where we're going. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to preface this. I would like for you by the end of this to in oh, some sure. way, even on the forum, some way, someone explain to me how <laughs> mankind evolving moving away from Africa, right? Like the cradle yeah. of civil, like the cradle of mankind, Africa, and we all spread out. And like, at what point in that sort of 4 million year period did Atlantis become the place we all settled and then branch out from again? I'm just going to like sit back. I, let have, you, I, I will give you your answer. I am waiting episode. for this answer. I want this I answer. I actually have your answer in this episode. Let us begin. Um, Listen, I'm a 30 something year old man over here and uh, I like to eat healthy nowadays. At least I have been for the past few months and I'm proud of it. But one of the things I had the hardest time giving up was those morning sugary cereals. And I know we're all trying to eat better these days, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors that you love without all that bad stuff. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. It also has only 140 calories a serving. It's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. You can build your own box or get a variety pack with available flavors of cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. Magic Spoon is also bringing back two super popular flavors, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. Mm. And these two aren't coming back temporarily. They're coming back permanently, baby. Go to magicspoon.com slash chill and be sure to use our promo code chill at checkout to save $5 on your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash chill and use code chill to save five bucks. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. Before we move, a big shout out to the sources today. The two primary sources that I'm using is a book called Meet Me in, Atlant- Meet Me in Atlantis by author Mark Adams. Uh, it's a phenomenal book for those who are interested in the historical aspect, aspect of Atlantis. I ripped through this book in a day. It was such an easy read. He's so snarky in the right. It's, it's so, so good. And um, Aquaman things, uh, issues 25 through 29. <laughs> I did, yeah, absolute <laughs> reference. Uh, um, uh, websites like Atlantopedia, which is kind of my hub for using the that place. Atlantopedia like is not about Atlantopedia Atlanta, Georgia? IE, um, yep, uh, and countless other websites with that black background, white text, uh, giving and trying to weave together the commonalities to all these people's beliefs, because believe it or not, there's a lot of varying differences between these two uh, these two groups of uh, true believers and how they believe Atlantis came to be. Now, the origin of Atlantis and its people, unsurprisingly, is incredibly difficult to trace back. 
the earliest in which I've been able to research and agreed upon generally by those who seem to discuss this sort of thing is something around 100,000 years ago. But that is also up for debate, as we'll see a little later. It's first and thus far, and it's first and only mentioned thus far in history is by Plato in his work, The Timaeus, and again in Cretius. Exactly what was said is something we'll discuss next week. However, here's what we do know. Atlantis was an island nation set right, for the sake of this episode, set right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, a kingdom blessed and created by Poseidon himself, some believe. The story goes that Poseidon had a children, uh, t- five sets of twins, with a mortal li- a wife, bearing him ten sons. Each of the sons were granted pieces of Atlantis to as a, uh, as a way to rule over the kingdom as a whole, which would ensure stability and eons of peace and prosperity. How would ten kings do such a thing, you might ask? Should a single brother rise against and begin war to take land for himself, all nine other brothers were to join forces and quickly stamp out the problem. And in that, peace was ensured for untold centuries or millennia. To this day, Atlantis was the wealthiest known kingdom to have ever known to exist, rich in oraculum, which I hope I'm saying correctly, uh, which is a metal only second to gold, while the island itself was overflowing with flourishing fruits, flowers, and domesticated crops that could feed its people with plenty to spare. The island's lush plants not only were able to feed the supposed hundreds of thousands, or according to others, millions of people that made up the Atlantis society, but also keep a lush and abundant wildlife, including many elephants. We also know how Atlantis was laid out as a kingdom. I'm going to try and explain it, and you can actually look up pictures of it. if you. It's pretty easy to look up. Sitting at its center was a large, fertile plain of land by which rested a short or some small mountain. Uh, Surrounding this mountain or hill, the word is interchanged depending on the source, uh, were a series of concentric circles, two of land and three of water. I've seen these images. Yeah, this is really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All laid out perfectly equidistant from one another as if shaped, quote, with compass and lathe. It looks like Disneyland or something. Yeah, it's it very, it, yeah, it's very like that kind of layout. Yeah. Two springs also existed, one hot and one cold. Now, historically, this is actually known to have happened to a, uh, with a couple of settlements throughout the world. So it's not super fantastical that they'd be gifted two magical springs, one of hot water and one of cold water. A canal was then dug that pierced the three circles of water so that ships could pass through into the center. This canal was 300 feet wide 100 feet deep, while a little over six miles in length. Around the rings, the Atlanteans constructed bridges as well as even smaller water passages large enough for a single warship to pass through next to each bridge. The Atlantis interior island was about 3,000 feet in diameter, and around it, a stone wall had been constructed. The stone for the buildings, of course, was quarried from the central islands and other areas. The stone itself was a mix of white, black, and red in colors. One of the most defining features Plato discusses when he's talking about it is that like its rocks had these tricolor bands running through them. Being ever resourceful, the Atlanteans turned the areas that had been quarried for stone into ports and harbors for ships with stone roofs. The walls around the outer rings of Atlantis were decorated in brass and tin, while the wall around the central citadel, quote, flashed with the red light of auriculum. Auriculum? But it's most def- yeah, is that how you say it? Am I saying it incorrectly? Is that like or a, a Minecraft? Or a, can you or spell a it? What? I don't know. I... O R. Yeah, I'll spell it. O R I. Or a calcum? Yeah, that's that's probably it. Like C-H-A-L-C-U-M. the best metal in Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, it's the second. It's second only to gold. That was basically the that this is what Atlantis was rich in. Or a this calcum? Had, or a it definitely or a calcum? Yeah. Or a calcum? I think is how it's said. Um. But however, that's just this outside walls and, and the like. It's most defining. The most defining feature, though, of Atlantis uh, could be found in the innermost circle of concentric rings. For the kingdom of Atlantis had built a spectacular palace, quote, a marvel to behold for size and for beauty. Now, while in Plato's original tale, this was a large palace that was also a temple to Poseidon, their guardian, creator, and for some even father, The narrative seems to have fallen off those who believe that Atlantis was a very real and a very futuristic place. This is kind of where their beliefs begin to split. More likely, 
This, for them, was the place that a UFO filled with Nordic-type aliens landed and began to build their paradise. Of course. And it's here where we see why the Atlanteans had such a long reigning paradise and also the cause of their downfall to the continent of Lemuria, which we will also cover sometime in the future. The, the Atlantis theory is like low key also like, oh, by the way, went, but also Lemuria had to oh, exist. Well, Lemuria, Mu, they're all involved. Atlantis went to war with Lemuria and they not, destroyed each other. But that's not we'll talk Eric. Eric. <laughs> Ooh, I don't what? know what to say here because I feel like that's a spoil for the next episode, but that's not what Plato says. Oh, absolutely. This We are now deviating. We are now cutting okay. from Plato's original cloth right. and we're going into the, to the world where people have now, and you might be wondering where they get information like this. They channel meta beings through themselves. <laughs> oh, and there's course. plenty of interviews you can read, watch on YouTube, uh, books you can buy from these meta beings who channel Wait, Atlantis. So because Plato's a lot of us- explanation- of why Atlantis is gone is not good enough. No, it's, so, it's pretty aliens. good, Plato, but no, these no, meta no. beings, you know. Plato just didn't understand <sighs> that the gods were aliens. But that, it was, it was but, inconceivable to him. You know what he saw yeah. as gods was aliens. You get it? Because remember, Plato no, didn't actually see Atlantis. He got the story from somebody else. He was who got in the, the story. cave and he saw the shadow of Atlantis cast. No, no, right. off. Right. First off, how dare you? <laughs> Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> But in the Plato story, the yeah. powerful Atlantis gets its it, like, all right, I'm not going to spoil it. We'll deal with it. No, no, no. We're going to. I know we are in the world of the of the fantastical today, Jesse. Next week is much more about Plato and all that stuff. You got to you got to take away your scientific pants today, Jesse. It's you not even go. science. It's literally just the guy we're saying is the origin of this story has a is the completely origin, different story than what you're telling me right now. If well, I now showed a mouse a car. It, and correct. he went That's, home and to- showed his, his mouse family about the car. He wouldn't say, I'm pretty sure it's a V8. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this, is, but yeah. this isn't what it is. But the, 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 difference isn't, the difference isn't like, and then the gods battled in the heavens over Atlantis. It's not the difference at all. No. The difference no, no, is so again, not even, we, this not is even similar. This, this is where modern day believers in Atlantis now separate. They're just making because, stuff up because it's cool. <laughs> No, Jesse, <laughs> they understand the truth because they've been able to speak. Just because the they made it that up once inhabited doesn't mean Atlantis. it's not right. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Um, so again, this is where they, they deviate. They're saying now they're every fact what begins with a guess. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, you're, every whoa, every fact begins whoa. with a blind guess. Whoa. And this you're is, not this wrong. Is where, you're not. <laughs> whoa. Mind blown. But we will. I will full on do a whole maybe two episode series about Lemuria in the future and the war that endured between Atlantis and can Lemuria. You, really quickly, just really yeah. quickly. I don't know if I can do with this Atlantis, really quick. Atlantis, uh-huh. according to this theory, yeah. are, are Nordic aliens. Lemurians are... Also aliens. Right, right. But another, like, another human alien well, no, they're fusion. All, they're all... Yeah, they're all part, they're all kind of branched from the like, same species. But like, what do species. they look like? Are they white dudes or like, how are they roll? Oh, yeah. For us, yeah, they're absolutely white. They all they're look right. exactly all like Prince from, from 1983. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk okay, about it. We're going right. to get there, Jesse. Lemire, but this is this is the idea. Again, this is where, we, can we branch away from Plato and his original story and we go into the land of facts as we channel meta beings from the fifth dimension and tell us about a reincarnation as Atlanteans? Because there are still people with Atlantean blood that walk among us today. And I want you to know that Jason Momoa being one of them. Obviously, yeah. he's clearly like he's like Poseidon's like one of the ten sons. He's clearly. literally the son of the king of Atlantis, and he needs to get his shit together. <laughs> okay, so it's at this point in the story we start to learn why Atlanteans had such a long reigning paradise, and also the cause of their eventual downfall to the land of Lemuria and other things, which we'll cover in a future war of Atlantis and Lemuria in another episode. See, Atlanteans weren't humans as we know them now. Creations are offspring of some distant alien race or those that may be, according to some others, originated from an alien race that resides on Mars. This is where things get a little confusing as I'm going to dive further, a bit further back in time to our actual true origins for real. In the beginning, you mean of was all people? Very, of all humankind, we are going back to the origin point of how we came to be. So just for the In record, the you're saying yeah. that the scientific evidence that all people came from Africa is, in fact, a lie 
And they just don't have the whole. Well, no, isn't it, have- isn't it Asia now? Isn't Asia now the cradle? Isn't they? Didn't they find like an even older guy or something? I'm not. I have. No I mean, idea. maybe he was an alien. We don't know. Maybe. No. So it, it's not. I'm not saying they're wrong because they're not necessarily wrong. They don't just. They just don't have the whole picture because they. It's impossible for science to go back this far. There's no any more evidence for it. It's all too destroyed and too long ago. So the only way for us to truly understand our history is again to channel higher beings, which is how we mm, have this. And only a few select people can do this. Of course. Well, yeah, that's a talent not all of us have. Not all of us can have the blood of Atlanteans running through us, Jesse. What if, I if was you a do star have the, child? If you have the side of the hawk uh, and you're fighting against the Templars, then you're able to see <laughs> oh, when somebody's right. a human or if they're correct, an Isu. Correct, correct. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, how do my yeah, Witcher well, senses factor into this? Can I, like, <laughs> does that help me in any way? You, if you have you access laugh. to your potions, then you're able to activate them at will. Uh, now, should I use Igni or Ard for this process? Well, it depends. Have you had at least one long rest? I have not. No, not for a l- while. It's been a while. We've well, got his Ard then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Ard then. Sorry. Right, I'll get my Quen ready and we'll call it a life. Yeah. <laughs> we guys, Listen. we've all played The Witcher. Okay. <laughs> we're rewinding. We're, now we're spinning the earth backwards, boys. I got to bring you back in time. In the beginning, there no, was that the wasn't very- Aquaman. That was Superman. I'm just right, sorry. Okay, I'm You're just right. being obnoxious now. <laughs> You're fine. In the beginning, there was the very first Earth civilization that existed nearly eight million years ago. Whoa. Okay. okay. Eight million. This hold on. Wait. Whoa, eight whoa. million years ago uh, is the first. Okay. The first just Earth civilization. Time. Time. Woo, time out. Time out. <laughs> eight million is the first Earth civilization. The first Earthen civilization. Okay. Let me just remind everyone. The first proto-human we have on record is 4 million 4.5 yep. or something like that all right human. 8 million human right right right. that's i'm just what i'm saying the first human thank you thank you alex you are on the money but <laughs> but the atlantis you said earlier was a hundred thousand years ago correct we're yeah. even further back all from right that. you're so playing, the first you're playing like settle. you haven't even seen jupiter's legacy that's what that's or jupiter <laughs> ascending like that's what i'm saying like no I i've mean, never seen that movie <laughs> yeah, sure it's very I, educational I have, I have seen it i know of the legends <laughs> and their love of rollerblading <laughs> <laughs> just wait jesse you're gonna be you're gonna be blown away when you understand earth's <laughs> actual up. history i need to be quiet i'm ready? ready all right we're eight million years back earth's first civilization this civilization was known as hibernia now, what we know of Hibernia is very little. <laughs> it sounds like it was made up by Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Hibernia. <laughs> the oldest of the earthen civilizations formed like almost 8 him. million years can, ago. Her Napoleon. He's the guy. Her Napoleon, give me her tots. <laughs> I can see Napoleon being one of the dudes who runs one of these websites I was on this Famous past week. for their likers. <laughs> <laughs> So this first civilization was known as Hibernia. We don't know much about Hibernia, very little, other than they wiped themselves out with nuclear warfare. Whoa. Empathy. (laughs) I know, Jesse, it's confusing. Hang in there. During this first Earth civilization, it was meant to be a sort of neutral zone of sorts, a place that other races across the galaxy who were part of the Galactic Federation could come and reside peacefully. They called themselves the Galactic each other. Federation. Uh, absolutely correct. Yes, sir. It is the Galactic Federation. <laughs> Guess he's shaking his head right now. <laughs> I, just... I said I'd be quiet. I'm just going to let you. I just want to be clear <laughs> that the people from eight million years ago were aliens. Beat. <laughs> they beat out Star Trek to the Galactic Federation. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry owes people some money. It's probably a rough translation, right? You know what I mean? You know, know, it wasn't. They might just be using our own language that we understand. You know, when we're channeling these people, we're speaking in words that we understand. Like how uh, Bumblebee, the Transformer, can only talk with the radio. Right. Perfect example. So we don't know much of that history other than the peace wouldn't last and they would revert to nuking themselves out of existence while here on Earth. After the fall of Hibernia, It took a long, long time for a follow-up civilization to appear. This was partly because the planet had now become uninhabitable for a long period of time due to the nuclear winter and the wars, as well as the following natural disasters that had meant to end the Hibernia approximately 8 million or so years ago. 
and partly because there was much sadness among the Galactic Federation. These were the ones, obviously, who in turn decided to colonize Earth. They were very uh, upset at their failure of an experiment of this kind of neutral planet, trying to have all these races live on there. So they took time to grieve their loss, to grieve their failed experiment before they moved forward. The collaboration of peaceful planets in our Milky Way is specifically the Galactic Federation, by the way. It's only within the Milky Way galaxy, not outside of it. And they were much better developed than we are even now. Because Hibornia was to have been a perfect example of a harmonious society with various ancient races who, in other places in the universe, were each other's enemies. That is all this ended, so that all this ended in a war after all was very disappointing to the Federation, which ultimately strives for peace and unity. But time passed. Earth would eventually restore itself and uh, over time, a sort of water primate, which appeared to be sufficiently promising to live on our planet of Earth, had been discovered on a planet in the Vega star system. This wasn't a matter of catching a few of those apes and then bringing them here to Earth and letting them loose into the wilds. They had to take due care with these creatures. Endless preparation is needed with much consultation between experts of various disciplines, as in a complicated laboratory equipment and experimentation. It's like when Kelly moved her Monstera from the pot from the flower shop into the <laughs> pot in our house. Bingo. Yeah. So you can't just rip them out their roots and plant them in, un, in strange soil. They had to put the, the monkeys in a bag inside the fish tank and leave yeah. them in there for a little while to get used to the fish tank before letting them in. You, I'm with you. you. On, this you is easy this, stuff. Alex. This is easy stuff. Exactly, man. This is easy stuff. Well, you with you know, so far, I've Jesse? got five windows open and I'm trying to research a way to already debunk how insane what you're saying is. But Why please. are you trying to, Jesse, you got, you can't, it's too, it's too easy to debunk. We're going to talk debunking next week. You got to run. You got to be in the ride, my man. You got to come for the ride. You for can't, this you one. can't tell me, you can't say there was a nuclear war <laughs> and that it wiped out everything on the planet. Yeah, 8 million years ago. Uh, okay, and I want to let you know <laughs> that the r radioactive decay of anything that would be used in a nuke is like billions of years. So I just want to let you know that there's nowhere in the geological record of like looking through geological time and as we go back to Cretaceous and Jurassic and 64 million years that there's no just like layer of radioactive fallout. It doesn't exist. You want to know why? Do you want to know why? I do. I already know why. I already know why. Because, again, they had to prepare this planet for these water primates they discovered. You, and so they had to cleanse and prepare the planet prior to allowing them it's, to why just uh, It's the flower pot, Jesse. You got to get some of the soil and you got to clean okay. it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Time mm -hmm. out. Time out. Time mm -hmm. out. Time yeah. out. We, from the Vega star system. I these must, water primates I must, came from uh, the Vega right. star system. All right. I must not have been paying attention. That's water, what I got. That's, I, water yep. primate? Okay. Yeah, see, you were you were lost. <laughs> can, hey, can, can I go on a quick tangent? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I watched I watched a TED talk one time. Uh, this lady who was like a, a scientist, she's talking about like humans jumping from being like basic bitch animals to like smart civilized creatures. And mm -hmm. they're talking about how most likely, like according to her theory and her research like there's a lot of evidence out there for humans being like a ape species that lived like right on the edge of the of the shore and spent a lot of their time floating uh in water which is why women have naturally like this longer hair scenario hmm, so that kids can hang on to the hair and why we still kind of have sometimes like webbed feet and hands and why uh we have really big dicks for being monkeys like if you look at like uh <laughs> what are you trying to say about apes man well i'm just well, saying like you. if you look at a gorilla right like you'd think yeah. a gorilla would have like a huge honking donger right just based on if you're looking at humans and you're looking at a gorilla but gorillas actually have pretty small peen zones because i didn't they, say that about you gorilla that's stereotyping i'm just I saying say I, that i'm just saying like Ours are much deeper and much more. We we go really far in because uh, the theory goes that we're trying to get away from the salt water. You know what I mean? Like we're trying to get up in there rather than monkeys, which can just kind of like rub it on the outside a little bit. You know oh, what I mean? Interesting. What 
the f- well, the, the more evidence that we came from the some planet in the Vega star system, really. I'm just what? saying, like, water apes, it's not as out- you weren't paying attention. Humans <laughs> as water apes is not as outlandish of a theory as you might expect. That's all I'm saying. Sure. We got, no, we got uh, that's, smooth that's because of the water, you know. We got, yeah, yeah. And, and we'd, we'd go in trees and down in the water and kind of live like otters, it, it, uh, you know, something to think about. I can about. see it. I can see it in my imagination here. And that's right, real. Jesse. That's real shit. I'm not even yanking your chain. Yeah. So, Jesse, the Galactic Federation held off on doing a second civilization because they were grieving, basically, their failed experiment. Iborea how long was do they be- grieve? What's the grieving we process? Don't, we don't really know. We don't fully know how long it took. Here's what we do know. Who could say? We don't know Hyborian culture. Hybornia. You know? Hybornian right? culture. <laughs> exactly. Hibornia was to have been a perfect example of a harmonious society with various ancient races who, in other places in the universe, were each other's enemies. That is all that all this ended in a war after all of that was super disappointing for the for the Federation because they strive for unity. Who the said time no, passed. no? How do we know this information? Channeled. From who? Uh like extra dimensional beings Which who one? occasionally a bunch of different ones. Now let me ask you a question. This is I'm just sure. putting this out there. Uh-huh. Why have we chosen to trust the word of this extra dimensional being? Because they're extra dimensional. So they must have the truth. You tell me that I there can't be liars from extra dimensions. You have to be careful. Well, you can, you gotta understand. You gotta kind of, Oh God, you're going to get me into energies. You gotta be careful of the energies that they bring. And if they're, what, bringing if, they're a negative what, energy. if they're, what if they're positive, but there's uh-huh. giving you the answers you want to hear because you know, well, that doesn't make like very, nice very guys. positive. Is it? Uh, that's, that's I mean, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear, what you don't want to hear. You just want someone to listen to sure. you and then tell you what you want to hear. And then you're, well, when you're they're trying to teach you the true history of your species. Lying purposefully would be a negative thing. No. Well, what if it's them telling you uh-huh. the history, but it's like the history is a lie. Well, there is. Some, okay. Like, what, there if they, is what if their history Jesse. books are incorrect? What if <laughs> you, what okay. they know have is you, inaccurate? Have you but heard they of are the being Akashi. honest in what they know? <laughs> you, did you hear mm-hmm. the Akash library? The Akashi Library, that mystical library that exists in the astral realm that all truths are ever known and will be known, you can access even that of your own life. Sure, of course. Dungeons and Dragons, yes. That's where you can cross-reference these things if you're talented enough in astral projection to get to this li- these libraries, these books. And to- Which source book is that in? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> When I when I go to use this in my DVD campaign. Is that an official module? <laughs> yeah, is this like, is it is it sanctioned? From you wizards, talk is to this a few people? Yeah, it's not. You know, it's it's just the truth of the matter. People, mm-hmm. young mm-hmm. and old, can visit with right meditation techniques. Right. Okay. So time passed on Earth, and it eventually restored itself, and uh, and eventually a sort. And this is the part you missed: a sort of water primate, which appeared to be sufficiently promising to live on our planet, was found on a planet in the Vega star system. This wasn't a matter of catching a few of these apes and setting them loose here. This takes a lot of due process and care. An endless preparation is uh, endless preparation is needed with a ton of consultation between experts of various disciplines, as in a complicated laboratory experiment. A plan had to be made for what this creature should ultimately become and where society was ideally headed. What? It is also said this is this is basically the first humans are coming into formation, and these uh, these alien the Galactic Federation is basically debating what they want to do and how they want to craft these creatures into what would be the first humans. This is also where in this, this, I don't know how deep into the occult knowledge you are, but it's also said the crystal skulls also played a part in this. You know what crystal skulls are overall? Sure. Sure. Are the aliens aware yes. that it is the worst Indiana Jones film? <laughs> do you think they know? The aliens are part of why it's the worst Indiana Jones film. <laughs> And they had the knowledge <laughs> before that. Yeah, they were they was this part of the plan when they brought ape swimmers here to this planet to craft mankind. Water apes. Water apes. <laughs> correct. When they brought water apes here with their long hair, the children hanging onto the long hair. When they brought all this here, was uh-huh. it part of their long plan? To then, when they introduced our people to the Crystal Skulls, it would be through one of the worst 
indie. I'm going to say one of the worst movies released in the 20, the 2000s. That that whole period. Maybe <laughs> what one I'm of the hearing, worst films of all time. Oh, okay. What I'm what hearing, is part of their plan? Is, <laughs> what I'm Listen. hearing is not only is Jesse not seeing Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys, <laughs> but also... <laughs> But also, I need to do a Crystal Skull uh, episode on this on you this do. show. I was gonna say because like you have to have a, a base understanding of what the Crystal Skulls are for. I'm gonna try and give them to you now. The Crystal Skulls were kind of a blueprint for human consciousness, like a flash it's, drive of like data, like a model slash uh, yeah. flash drive. No, I've seen Correct. it. I know what happens to her. <laughs> Kate like Blanchett, she when, accepts too much knowledge and it, it overloads her system. It's no, like I the know. Voyager record. So, like, the aliens, basically the idea is they brought these water apes, right? But was that part of their plan? Yes, it was 100% part of their plan. All right, as long as they, as long as we all can agree, their full plan, the culmination (laughs) was the release of Indiana Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah, 100%. I can see that. And (laughs) I mean, it flopped. Did it flop? I don't know. I actually have no idea if it flopped. Uh, I'm pretty sure it made uh, $800 million. Well, the aliens did it. They did a good job. So the idea was they, Were they brought aware these water it got apes. a seventy eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Was that part of the yet. plan? Was I, that you a- know what we could do if we hit our next goal over on Patreon, the the twelve fifty one. We can we can start interviewing somebody who's a channeler. I would interview somebody who channels now. Was it was it, beings. was it also part of their plan that Indiana Jones kid was named Mutt? Did they, did they, did they want, that, I don't think that, so. I don't think that, that was, that might've been a Lemurian. Did they, right. they, they I don't, it might've been, I don't it might've been a Lemurian. Were last. they yeah. like, fine with casting Shia LaBeouf as his kid? <laughs> is and it being a, a coincidence? Greaser? Is it a coincidence that there is an Indiana Jones and the fate of Atlantis? Right. You know coincidence. Obviously, here's the thing. They should have made that the movie because that was a good ass game. I, if we could, <laughs> yeah. if we could base this entire episode on the that video game, behind me, I would be. I shut up and just let you go. It kind of is based on the game, The Fate of Atlantis. I got it right there. Oh, it's a great game. Um, it is a great game. Um, kind of is based on the game if you think about it. A little, you know, in a weird way. <laughs> so the idea with these crystal skulls, for those who don't understand, crystal skulls are sort of like a blueprint for human consciousness. You know, as Alex said, like a flash drive, like this idea in this particular set of lore slash human history slash story. What they ended up doing was they brought these water apes from the star, the star system Vega here. They placed them on the newly renovated earth that were now prepared. And then they ended up taking these crystal skulls that they crafted, they created and spread them all over the world. And it, that ended up serving as a blueprint for the consciousness of the now developing new human. So in a way it's like kind of like shooting out radio waves and like, broadcasting or in like serving as a blueprint for human to d- develop their own consciousness. This creation process is too complicated to really kind of go into because it's a bunch of fucking hooey, but uh, needless to say, it would take a whole episode just to talk about the crystal skulls. As Alex said, question. Uh-huh. So the galactic federation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Created. They brought, I mean, just, I just want to, again, yeah, yeah, no, you're good. Keep asking. They go brought ahead. the water apes. To Earth. Yep, they brought the water. Apes they to placed Earth. crystal skulls yep. nearby who that would then transmit intelligence. That's the, best the idea way I of, can well, describe the idea, it. and I'm just following you here. The sure, idea sure. of uh sort of you know self-consciousness, the idea that we you know recognize that we exist, which many yep. things do not. And then the follow-up is we in return choose to worship a God that is not them. Actually, multiple gods through multiple, like we choose, well, like Atlantis how do they feel didn't. about right now Atlantis didn't. that all Atlantis the major religions gods that are them. monotheistic? How do they feel about that? I, well, that's a very good question. One that we may or may not answer today. I'm just episode. putting it out there to, to, to the Galactic Federation. Well, okay, are you, you are, pissed the, the real, that our we human- spurned you and chose <laughs> a different path? Modern day humanity is so below what the Atlanteans were that we're kind of a failed experiment at this point. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the Atlanteans That's were. That's rude as shit. I, know, I think we're doing pretty good, good frankly. Truth. You know, I thought so too, but not according to how these people once lived. I just watched the end of Evangelion and I kind of agree with the aliens. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Making content is an essential part of what I do to keep this show going, but it hasn't always been a seamless creative process. 
Recently, we've been preparing for the live show in LA later on this year. And that means less time for me to work on social media posts and, and content like that, and more focus on backend stuff. But ever since I found Canva Pro, I can design anything like a pro on any device in much shorter time. Canva Pro is a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. Whether you're a designing professional or just getting started, designing with Canva Pro is amazingly fast and fun. You get to choose from thousands of professionally made templates that are easy to customize with simple drag and drop features, or you can start from scratch if you're creatively involved. Canva Pro comes with endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much more that add personality and edge to whatever you're designing. Sharing, creating, and organizing designs as a group has also never been easier. Canva Pro helps you stay on top of team projects all in one place. No more misplaced files or tedious back and forth. With Canva Pro's content planner, you'll save time planning, creating, and posting social media content too. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code. Just go to canva.me slash chill to get your free 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash chill. Canva dot me slash chill. <laughs> I'm sure it would make so more like sense said, if you were an alien. That's true. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Alex, we'll leave the Crystal Skull episode in Alex's capable hands and one day... Mitchell Hedges, probably... here. I'm coming for you. Get ready. Exactly. This will be a nice and little tie-in episode for that. Um, but basically, because higher spiritual aspects and things such as root races were also involved, which we sort of talked about way back in the day when we talked about those original like 12 or 13 alien races, all of them, like it's all muddled into that Crystal Skull thing and the creation of this first like new civilization on Earth. So let's just say that the first creatures that were introduced to an island group in the Pacific Ocean and were guided there now approximately 900,000 years ago in terms of where we are in the timeline, they did not look like the current human in the slightest. This island group was called Lemuria or simply Mu. So they were the first ones. Despite the necessary natural disasters, the new human developed itself successfully in around 210,000 BC a new chapter in human history could be added to our story. And that is Atlantis's origin point. As has been mentioned, Atlantis was in the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 1,500 kilometers from the coast of Europe and Africa in this story. It was like a paradise there, where the temperature was approximately always between like 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the whole year. The ground contained many volcanoes and was therefore very fertile. Atlantis reached the highest development level that had ever existed on Earth, even to this day. Damn. Much higher than us. Yeah, I know. Much higher than us now, both spiritually and technologically, people lived as one with nature and with creatures from higher realms and other planets regularly. Atlantis and Lemuria were even members of the Galactic Federation itself. So it's, it's important to note that these people that were placed here by the Galactic Federation evolved in such a way and created such a society that they could join the Galactic Federation as their own standalone entities. The airspace above Atlantis was, all, was controlled with all kinds of different airplanes, which are discussed in the oral traditions and old Sanskrit texts of peoples across the world, such as the Hopi and other Native American tribes, the Irish, the Celts, and the Indians. But I must put into parentheses, that is highly up for debate and heavily up for interpretation because where these come from, I, it's, it's, it's not as definitive as they'd like you to believe. Atlantis also built submarines and computers. There was free energy from sunlight and quartz crystals, and there was a type of television entertainment system that they had. Only natural material was used and everything that was no longer needed, such as waste, was recycled or dematerialized. They did not have trash piles. They like disintegrated trash is kind of like the best way to describe it. Somehow in a way that kind of like how the, the wizard got it. rid of the poop out of their uh, <laughs> buttholes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the exact, exact same way. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, there's no, we don't really know what that means other than they kind of just dematerialized their own waste. Um, 
Throughout the year, these were people who enjoyed celebrations and ceremonies, such as solstices to celebrate the love and unity with each other and that of Mother Earth. And it's at this point I want to talk about also the peoples themselves. They were, as is mentioned many times, supposedly higher than we were now and not in the THC sense and more in the spiritual sense. I was going to say, there's they were, no way they're higher than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> These people had a higher consciousness, understood the world and the unifying consciousness that sit above in a higher dimension, had telepathic powers, innate healing abilities that they could lay their hands upon somebody and remove their illnesses. Everybody was extremely tall, somewhere around six and a half, seven feet, and large people. And, and there are supposed photos of archaeologists with mummies from Atlantis that were taken by the Smithsonian, a well known product of the Illuminati. So you cannot trust the Smithsonian, as we've talked about in other episodes. Did they find them in Arizona? In the Grand no, Canyon? but you will be surprised at how Minnesota comes into play Not next week. Not that surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jesse, what were you saying? Nothing. I Sure. <laughs> the Smithsonian <laughs> is part of the Illuminati. The Smithsonian is part of the Illuminati. You look it up. You can Google it. It, comes it makes up pretty perfect quick. sense if you think about it. Right. If you just take a minute and think about it. You right. just open your eyes. <laughs> you are saying the exact same bullshit that every aunt is posting on Facebook. Like if you just do your research, COVID's not even real. That's what you're. That's what you're doing I right doubt, now. I doubt we're looking at the same websites. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna link. You I'm boys not so sure. Photo. I I gotta be honest with you. I feel like they're on the exact. It's actually not even real. You're on Hang the exact on, so I'm gonna same link websites. You guys, a supposed photo, real quick. Uh, this is going to be on uh, right on Zoom here. I'm just going to send it. This is one of the photos that I came across when doing my research of finding these supposed mummies. Yo, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big lad. It looks like he's got pants on. He, he kind of looks like he's got some pants on. And then there's one more photo as well. Uh, yep, here it is. And I'll, I'll share this with you again. Uh, if you're listening, seriously, just Google like. Mummies of Atlantis. Giants, probably come up with honestly, it. like that's another episode. Yeah, that's that a we whole definitely other. Got to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the second photo. Those are the only two photos that I could find, but they're these. These are mummies that were supposedly their photos were taken before the Smithsonian came and took all mummies everywhere around the world, and now only allows us to see them when they deem fit because they're trying to hide the truth from us. So they only allow us to see the mummies that fit the human history narrative that we've been taught in school and by our own Those government. Bastards. Let me ask you a question. Uh, yeah, well, you're welcome to. <laughs> the men who are in these photos, yeah. how tall do you think they are? Um, <laughs> Four foot one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> do you do you think that they're six feet? Mm. These men in these photos. Do you think they look like uh, they're six feet tall? They could be. Here's what, all I can tell you is that supposedly these mummies were eleven and a half feet tall. Right, but like the men in the photo. Yeah, well, if you do, if you take that for its word, so they're probably like six feet. Yeah, you know. So the all right, Maybe. so the men in the photo are six. They look proportionately six feet tall for sure, and not at all like they're much <laughs> shorter men. But like whatever, it's cool, it's fine. You, but you uh, you think they think they found a short guy to take a picture with the mummy rather than the mummy itself being eleven feet tall? That really seems more plausible to you. Should I answer this or should I wait until next no, episode? Please, please, please don't answer this. <laughs> should I wait until the next answer. episode the, to say that people lie all the time? Or no need. Should I? No need. No oh, need. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Moving onward. Now, the sources for this next bit vary. However, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention something that allowed these people to thrive as much as they have in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, in essence, alone. While the general warmth of the place came from the many volcanic bodies beneath them, it wouldn't be enough to keep them really safe. They would still be, there would still be, of course, victims to other natural disasters like hurricanes, earthquakes, and so on. For life to exist in such an undisturbed utopia for multiple thousands of years, luck would need to be on your side in a way that would break statistics. Unless, unless, sitting at the very center of that magnificent kingdom that we talked about when we were talking more about Plato's area, instead of that being a temple to, for, to Poseidon, was something else. Something that could, in addition to controlling the weather, winds, 
and general climate around it also control the seismic activity and volcanic activity that lie beneath them, ensuring that Atlantis and its people can and did thrive. Now, what is supposed at the center is basically this two schools of thought. One, it was a machine given to them by the Galactic Federation, basically when they first came, came down, uh, gave, you know, put these like water apes on the planet. They also left technology behind and they were able to use it and, and bring like um, bring it back or what do you call it? Reverse engineer of the technology and create this amazing device. The other side of the line believes it's a giant fucking crystal and they were able to channel the energies of life, the planet, um, extra dimensional beings through it. And while, while accessing this crystal, they could keep the weather and the volcanic activity and the seismic uh, movements at bay simply by being so in tune with nature and Mother Earth itself that this crystal was all that they needed. What do you think? Which one do you believe? Are you a machine believer or a crystal believer? I feel like I'm more crystal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, just my, like if we're going like if we're doing like a which which uh, beetle are you kind of thing, I feel like I'm. <laughs> I feel like I'm more of a crystal guy than a machine guy. Fair, fair enough. What about you, Jesse? Which one? You think it was a machine then? How dare you? You remember we're believing for this. Oh, moment, you had to okay? choose. We're, if you had to choose between one of those two, well, I mean, if I had to choose between one of those two, I would choose the combination that it was a machine that mm, okay. uh, was powered by a crystal, but they didn't truly understand the crystal's powers, but they understood how to repair the machine. So they were just the caretakers of the machine powered by the crystal that then kept everything going. Obviously. I unique and never believed chills take before. So chills. I, I, yeah, chills in my spine. Chills. It, it rings Thank true you. to me. Yeah. In a level I mean, I feel like it's must, very obvious. I don't know why we just didn't all just assume it was both. I'm getting, I'm getting fifth dimension vibrations right now that tell me that you're speaking words. Yeah, no, of, that didn't uh, come truth. out of my mouth. So. That was channeled right. through me by wow. uh, Imhotep. Oh my! Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Holy! Oh my goodness, yeah. dude! Whoa. I'm jealous. Did I, I mention I, can get I that. in another lifetime I was Nefertiti? I'm so dude. All, when I try to channel, all I get is like Charlie Manson. Charlie Manson. <laughs> I don't know. He just wants to murder people. What I don't the understand. F- what? Wait, what? What the hell? Is this a cry I for help? Just, what are you? <laughs> Charlie Manson. You Charlie came Manson. That's just the name that came to my head. I'm sorry. I tried. Manson. I just let my Channel mind Charles go. Manson. Manson. All the people in history, that's the one you were like, you know who really talks I'm, to me? Well, okay. Let me, can Man- I please Charlie defend Manson? myself for a goddamn second for a Manson. moment? Charlie Manson. Charlie Manson. Like he's your butts. Charlie Manson. Charlie Manson. Like he's from the Charlie Manson. Maybe it really is the boy down the street. <laughs> it's yeah, not it's like, Charles Manson. Yeah, it's just no, it's a dude named Charlie, Charlie Manson. It's a guy named Charlie Mason. <laughs> <laughs> He's like an old time. I'm back newsie. in the world of the serial yeah. killers. To be fair, for my next multi-parter after this one, so that's going to be my defense for now. Oh fuck. Okay. So during this time of the Atlanteans, this was what was known for them, and historically for those who look upon the Atlantis history as the golden age of Atlantis and life there probably looked amazing. Interaction with higher creatures and extraterrestrials was something that was entirely normal and usually a daily occurrence. Various spaceships would fly through the sky and light beings without a body were daily sights on the streets of Atlantis. (laughs) Just streets of Atlantis is like a GTA game or something like that. (laughs) <laughs> submerged the streets of Atlantis. <laughs> Those who evolved spiritually often also learns to communicate with the world around them, both with the living beings and with and Charlie with, Manson <laughs> and with Charlie Manson and with the matter that most of us regard as lifeless. There's like plants, walls, dirt, walls. that kind of things. Yeah, walls were made of of natural oh, things, like, and they could speak with them. Like, like those they Jedi feel, that can like touch objects and see and where see it's been. Like, yeah, yeah. Except that it was an actual like consciousness in a way that existed in these like things. Like the walls, like what's up, dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just hanging out all day long. I can't imagine the conversations were amazing with those things. Fair enough. This way, the high priesthood of Atlantis could raise the vibration of a material like stone with their minds so that it almost became unsteady. 
This made it behave in a more liquid manner and it became much lighter. I genuinely like what they mean is like these priests could with their mind, like hold out their hand and you would watch a rock become to just kind of like turn liquefy before you and like warble and, and move around in this kind of bizarre manner. So they made it into magma or they just warped reality? No, not magma. No, they just warped it. it the way it's described, not magma. It's just like they turned it into this liquid matter, like but it's not truly liquid. It's just a lighter, like liquid looking material. It's very difficult to descri describe because I truly am not as enlightened as some of these people, but it's not magma. I will tell you, I know that for certain. It is not, it did not turn it into magma. The priests then were able to just by using their hands or simple tools, take large, perfectly fitting blocks of stone from the rocks and build walls or pyramids with it. So that's literally how they would build. They would warble the rock, cut easily, just like cutting through butter, like a perfect stone. And they could pull that stone out of that rock while the rem remnants of the rock would rematerialize and fall to the ground. So that's how they kind of created their, their like, again, it, it's impossible for us to ignore because these people were so far advanced compared to where we are on a spiritual level. That reminds me that I need to uh, <clears throat> do a Coral Castle episode as well. <laughs> hey, haven't uh, we any, done we got, that? Isn't that didn't coral we? Coral Castle? I swear I to God, we did a castle. Coral Castle. Did we? I can't. We remember. had to. Have. Are we at that point where we are starting oh, to forget? Oh, I the worry topics? about that all the time. I'm I positive don't. we've I, we've talked about it for sure. I don't. I don't. On a think mini, so. maybe? Did we? All right, we'll have to do. We'll have to look back before we'll look it up. Um, however, since these people could also raise their own vibration. They could levitate themselves up to tens of meters above the ground if necessary. They could literally fly. This ability was also used for travel, so now and then you could see people flying through the air in Atlantis amongst the many ships and spaceships and flying airplanes. Frequencies were also used for the transfer of knowledge. One person who had certain knowledge programmed water with the correct frequencies, after which another drank it and also acquired this knowledge. So he literally was able to pass on his knowledge by like vibrating the water with a certain so frequency. so sick. And then you kind of matrix download it by drinking the water. I love That's that. Nuts. That's so cool. That's, isn't that a cool, like cool way of just like such a cool idea. That's like some like, uh, yeah, like some like one of those, like when you're writing a big open world science, like science fantasy epic, you need a couple cool things that like make your civilization interesting. And, mm -hmm. and this is a one. This is programming a good one. water to like be like drinkable knowledge is great. I love. I I'm love right that so there much. With you. Yeah. We did not do yeah. the Coral Castle. No, we did I not. I think yeah. so. Why do I think? All right, it doesn't matter. It's fucked right, up. Yeah. Right? Programmable did water. Did you hear how? Did you hear how transfer? They transfer knowledge. Jesse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm buying in for today. It is nonsense. I know, I know but, but it's got to make sure you hear all of it. It okay? doesn't look. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not. Sure. But I'm not well, going to question it. You say literally, that, it's impossible. That for that to Literally. actually occur. That's not <laughs> listen, how water works. That's not how listen, the body I, works. It's, it's listen to me. Doesn't make any sense. That vibration, like there's, a, there's actually a principle that no, the small not. principles of there's this. There's no principles. There's no principle of this. Homeopathy is still based on today. No, that's not true. You're just making stuff up now. I'm not making stuff up. The people in which I, I, ha I had to read while during the research is making Okay, I'll be quiet again. I don't want to get, I'm going to get yelled no, no, at here for we go. This is the legend. So, some highly developed extraterrestrials, such as the Syrians, Pleiadians, and Arcturians, chose to reincarnate here in human form and lived lives here for thousands of years. The higher the development, the more you can determine your physical form, which led to many tall, beautiful people. Naturally, because the aliens were already so highly developed as a, a species, Apparently, it's actually common for extraterrestrial souls that once they have reincarnated on a planet, they can no longer call for the help of their space family if anything were to go wrong. I've heard about that. So sad. Yep, it is. It's just like it's a, you know, you kind of you got to know what you're going to sign up for if you decide to reincarnate in a, in a body like this on Earth. In this way, life on another planet can be experienced to its fullest. So when Atlantis perished... These groups were in the same boat, sometimes literally, as other Atlanteans who had fled for the land. Groups of reincarnated aliens looking for a unique individual experience. This is the reason that skeletons and mummies of these beautiful Atlanteans, tall people around the world, have been found in countless burial mounds in North America. The bodies look different from ours, and that's because they were different. 
The Golden Age was led by a spiritually highly developed group that called themselves, quote, children of the law of one. The law of one is one of the most important universal laws and means that although everything appears to be separate, in reality, everything forms one whole and is part of the, quote, creator. Some view as God, some view as just a singular consciousness looking to experience itself in a mortal form. How you interpret who the creator is, it seems to be kind of an individual thing. The matriarch, uh, the matriarchy, uh, the matriarchy led the children of the Law of One group. Mostly lived on the Atlantean island of Poseida, which was one of the largest three islands to remain after a sequence of natural disasters hit Atlantis around twenty eight thousand years ago. So Atlantis thrived for good almost two hundred thousand years before things began to they started getting hit by natural disasters and other things. The other two islands were called Og and Arian, of course. Atlantis was located on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the underwater mountain chain which runs from the north from north to south and which forms the fault line between two tectonic plates. New land continuously forms along this line due to the growing earth. This the sometimes creates volcanic activity and landslides and because of this, Atlantis fell into periods of great destruction for a total a grand total of 3 times. The last one around 2500 years before Christ proved fatal to the entire continent. This Now, again, this particular nugget is debated, as there are some who fully believe that, that natural, uh, the natural event that wiped out Atlantis was actually caused by machines Lemuria had that they were using against Atlantis during a war. This was the... Uh, this, uh, this last period of months of catastrophes was initiated by abuse of high technologies by the population of Arian. This was the largest island, and it was the high, uh, it was the high priesthood of that island that had fallen prey to the evil intentions of extraterrestrial visitors. The group, the Sons of Belial, arose from this. The self-declared superiority of this Arian race, now you understand where the superiority of the Arian race comes from, would continue to play a role in world history up until today, including in Nazi Germany and in various secret societies. Dude, Nazis looking for Atlantis is like, I can't believe that's like real. It, an, a, another a batch of episodes I'd love to do is just Nazi and it's occult roots and like, just where like they Hellboy from. origins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, as soon as the Aryans came under the influence of these evil extraterrestrials, they started to interfere with other civilizations more and more. Now here, the believers tend to dip back into Plato because they start cherry picking what they believe and what they don't. But here they believe, according to Plato, they built up an army of more than a million people and an enormous fleet, which ruled parts of North America and the Mediterranean Sea. Now, this is obviously an example of where these true believers, it starts to become obvious where they're cherry picking, right? Because a lot of the Plato story, they interpret as... Um, uh, aliens instead of gods and in these fascinating like you know these aliens came and created the civilization but when it comes to numbers or armies and stuff they're like no plato <coughs> said a million people so it must have been a million people not that plato might have been just using a number to sell the idea of countless men um, but they truly believe that it was an army of a million people and an enormous fleet which ruled parts of north america and the entire mediterranean area they learned how to split atoms using intense solar energy and how to use those atoms to build nuclear bombs. This later destroyed the Asian Empire of Yu, the ruins of two large cities which used to be Yu, now Pakistan, Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, are still supposedly radioactive because of this. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by those big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a friggin' catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, yeah, what's, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and actually using their service now for over a month, it all made sense. There really isn't one. Honestly, Mint Mobile's giant secret is that they're the first company to sell wireless services online only. The cost cutting is from them not having any retail stores. There's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on them sweet delectable savings 
direct to you. And I've now used Mint Mobile for a little over a month and I cannot tell a difference in terms of its service quality. It is just as good as the phone plan I was using prior. For people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile's offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their 7-day money-back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wire to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com/chill. That's mintmobile.com/chill. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com/chill. They also showed increasingly less respect for mother nature as time went on with which they had up until then, uh, which up until this point, they always lived in harmony with mother nature. They used their genetic knowledge to set up cloning programs to develop a low developed slave race that could do all the dirty work on their island. Surprise, surprise is where a lot of racist kind of theories kind of sprout from as most ancient humans kind of origins tend to deviate into that way for some reason. In addition, humans and animals began to be merged together leading to creatures including centaurs, mermaids, and the Yeti, which was a human and bear hybrid. The Yeti's many, a bear? Yeah, the, the Yeti, according to this, is a human-bear merger. It's a human-water ape merger. <laughs> mermaids are human-dolphin mergers, and centaurs are obviously human-horse mergers. And they were messing with all this stuff now because Atlanteans were losing their way. They were, their own ego was becoming too large. As with many myths and legends, these stories are based on, quote, actual facts. The two latter creatures, mermaids and yetis, still live on today in small groups, far away from modern civilization. Animals around today, such as the cheetah and the panda, are also the consequence of genetic experiments from eons ago, like various crops, such as the banana. Because Atlantis didn't go down immediately, as Lemuria did, but sank in a chain of disasters which took months a large portion of the approximately 25 million inhabitants, which is the higher end of those who believe to live there, were able to flee. One group requested and received asylum in the Agartha Network, another mystical land that maybe we'll cover during the, Lem the Lemuria episode, uh, just as the Lemurians and, and started to live actually underground. So uh, Lemurians went underground as their civilization crashed. Others spread out across the coast of the entire world, up to the east of Asia. This explains the large number, numbers of typical Atlantean stone circles, henges, burial mounds, dolmen, geoglyphs, cave drawings, and stone walls, which have been found everywhere in America, Ireland, England, around the Mediterranean Sea, China, and Africa, which, A, true. That's wild. There yeah. are, like, that's true, but they don't look the same. Like, they, they're, so, some of the, they're so basic looking, it's just like, of course that they built these kinds of tombs and these burial mounds with these rocks. What else were they going to do with them? Um, it's not compelling enough for me personally. It looks like the various populations that inhabited. So this, this escape, by the way, is known as diffusion theory. And depending on which researcher you talk to, diffusion theory happened or hyper diffusion theory happened where it happened under a much shorter span of time. But the idea is this is where the seeds for modern man happened. These people escaped and scattered across the world, and these groups of people that lived on created the Mayans, the Cherokee Indians, and a bunch of other groups across the world that would then kind of lose their connection to who they once were, all these technologies, and then kind of, quote unquote, start over again and become the humans that we are kind of today. Uh, it looks like the various populations that inhabited Atlantis each went their own way after the, the destruction and didn't much desire contact with each other after that. It's difficult to track which group went where, but as far as people have been able to put together, the Atlanteans, which directly descended from the extraterrestrials, mainly went to America and perhaps to Agartha. The Cherokee Indians in Southwest America, for example, have always said they descend from the Pleiadians. The Aryans most likely uh, mainly made their way to the British Isles in Northern and Western Europe, 
According to legends of native inhabitants, there were sometimes dozens of years between the arrivals of the of these attractive people with their blue eyes, blonde hair, blonde and red hair. So perhaps they had first tried living somewhere else, or they then wandered along the coast for years before eventually winding up there. Even today, lots of graves filled with red ochre can be found along the coast of North America and Europe. This was typical of Atlantean usage. This probably also counts for the less developed human race that had been used by the Aryans for slavery and genetic experiments. Now, these is where, again, it because every goddamn fucking stupid story has to always like break into some sort of slavery. They call these memories the Furbolgs, and they lived in the English and Irish myths of imps and goblins. So the slaves became devolved further. They were like humans and they devolved further. And they became goblins and imps in the stories. But in reality, when those stories were happening, they were devolved slave people who escaped Atlantis and then just became more animalistic like the in nature. Yes, pretty much. Finally, the children of law one, uh, rather the children of the law of one seem to mostly spread out across the Mediterranean the north of Africa, Sumeria, and the Asian colonies that they had founded earlier. In North America alone, over 200,000 ancient pyramids, geometric forms, and so-called effigies have been found, such as the Serpent Mound in Ohio, with a length of hundreds of meters, usually made of earth because there was much less stone there than in Atlantis. Did you ever go check out they the Serpent Mound, Jesse? Uh, we had to go as a field trip when I was a kid. I've been there multiple I, times. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. It was, it, is it cool as shit? It's neat. It's it's one of those places just like many of the um, things uh, that are sort of like bigger than, you know, what you can see with your eye. Sort of like, sure. uh, I imagine the Nazca lines where when you're there, it's like God, oh, that's a huge mound. I want to see that. Yeah. But like, you know, when you're yeah. above, it looks like something. But while you're there, a helicopter it's like, you know, tour. Yeah. I will say yeah, really I, I cool. appreciate it now much more than when I was there as a kid. Let's just put it that way. Fair. <laughs> These things show similarities to the pyramids of Giza in Egypt and uh, Teotihuacan in Mexico and refer to various astronomic events such as equinoxes, solstices, and lunar calendars. The Great Mound of Cahokia in Missouri was even as large as the Great Pyramid of Giza, but just as hundreds of other large mounds it was largely dug off at the end of the 19th century by order of the Smithsonian Institute, a known Illuminati tool. These structures no longer have the technical perfection of the former known, home country. I, a known I, Illuminati tool. I hate that. I, look, let me just state, I hate any time science is like, and then they're evil. I hate that shit. Me, like, and then the scientists are clearly evil. That's they're why. Evil, they're, they're arm of the government. You can't trust Well, them. of course. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> These structures no longer have the technical perfection of the former home country due to the intense natural disasters, which hit the world for years in the aftermath of the fall of the continent. Once the, because remember Lemuria as a continent went underwater. Yeah. Like, it got Who totally could forget? destroyed and that caused rains, earthquakes, floods, and all those went on for years until finally, until finally that they halted. The loss of material and professionals with the right know-how was so large that their previous standard of life had become unattainable. They could no longer go back to the world they had before. Also, because now people only wandered around in smaller groups, which were often not, more often than not in the best, they were often not in the best mental condition. However, if sufficient knowledge was present in the group, they reached a fairly high level now and then. Again, they're raising each other's vibrations. That's why it was so important for so many people to be around each other. The ability to use sound to lift weighty rocks from the ground and stack them on top of each other actually remained intact and nearly intact in nearly all groups for generations. On the heavy pillars of the ancient city of uh, Gabekli Tepe in Turkey, inscriptions have been found that seem to be about a comet-like event in the past that led to a catastrophe. I'm not sure why. Again, they, they it's frustrating because they simply see a comet and they immediately link it to Atlantis without without much more than just a kind of a painting. But they they'd say that that comet was part of the reason Atlantis finally went under. The act of destruction of knowledge undertaken by the extraterrestrials after Atlantis and Lemuria fell, who saw their chance after all of that disappeared, caused this this skill, the levitation skill 
to eventually disappear as well. So basically, Atlantis fell, Lemuria fell, a bunch of extraterrestrials who had kind of been waiting in the wings, evil ones who wanted to kind of swoop down and saw their chance to kind of like scoop up what they could, took it as their opportunity to come down and take all that technology and leave Earth with it because it was so sought after by those who were not as high a level as the Atlanteans. In case you're wondering where all that technology went, it got taken away by uh, scavengers, so to speak. Even peoples who still have much Atlantean blood in them today, such as the Irish, the Basques, the Mayas, and the Tibetans, <laughs> whoa, barely whoa, whoa, know whoa, this whoa, technology whoa, whoa. anymore. Whoa. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? You're telling me that I am yeah. part Atlantean. Me too, actually. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> I'm Irish. So you're letting me know that I am... I have you a mod. Might, you might uh, have Atlantean blood. Uh, I'm trying to <laughs> levitate might. my computer. <laughs> uh, Is it working? I mean, you don't know the right frequency yet. That's all. You got to find the right frequency, the right vibrational noise. Might just, uh, you have to be like, mommy, may me, moo. Me, mommy, <laughs> may me, play... mash my m ms <laughs> Did you ever play the Condemned games? Hell yeah. Criminal Origins? That Come on. Yeah, that vocal power he had. Yeah, maybe he was an Atlantean. Oh, who's so oh my yeah. god! <laughs> oh, there you go, dude. He had Atlantean power. Think about There's it. Is the connection? They're trying to send us messages through entertainment to this day. Well, anyway, well, yes. well. <laughs> Atlantean blood is most commonly in the Irish, the Bosques, the Mayas, and the Tibetans, but even they barely know this technology anymore. After the fall of the Atlantean Empire, the negative ex extraterrestrials, which eventually took over the command of Earth, literally left no stone unturned in order to erase everything that still carried a reminder of the Atlanteans, which is also another reason we can't find any existence uh, known record, because these negative energy extraterrestrials came into Earth and literally wiped it all out because they didn't want anybody to ever have knowledge of this ever again. Can I, of all course. right, all right, all right. I'm putting this, sure. I'm just going to put this out there to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Now, the negative energy extraterrestrials. Yeah. I imagine they. Reptilians are one of them for sure. Do they see themselves as villains? That's a good question. Because negative energy does not necessarily mean evil. That no, is. You know our perspective as positive energy beings. But like, are they no, evil? You're right. They do what they what need is to do evil? to, to you survive. Know what I mean? You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Man? They're the hero of their own story. <laughs> That's what makes a great villain, though. So maybe these guys were just maybe like... Maybe we're the villains. Maybe this is like I Am Legend you think and the we're the villain. Federation is the, you think the Galactic Federation is evil? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that's Ooh. the twist, man. Not my federation. Hashtag not my federation, okay? <laughs> you talk to me when we're talking about the Romulans and the Vulcans and, and that type of politics, okay? So you might be wondering then, you know, other than the, 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 the initial fall of the empires and the initial swarm of aliens who came and took the technology away, swarm. how were they able to, that's the best word I, I I'm with, with you. I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yes. Um, how could they wipe out so much history in such a short amount of time? Well, that's where their, their tactics changed. The wiping of Atlantean history wasn't done out in the open, but through secret societies under the control of these more evil extraterrestrials. Again, reptilians is a great example because they are one of them. The Among others, <laughs> the Roman Empire. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. I was just say? saying like one of their teams is the reptile squad. Well, one of the, the negative entities that are that are interfering with it is the reptilians. So They've always been. We're like less well, Galactic okay, Federation so and more Justice League versus Legion of Doom. Yeah, technically. Kinda, yeah, yeah. Here, okay. Here's the thing, though, and this is something I'm going to put out there. Um, because it's something I left out, Bef you know, in 8 million years ago when they made their first attempt, right? Bef bef even before that, oh. the reptilians had earth. So the reptilians, but they were from earth. They're like technically. underground, the, the old yeah. school S origin and of the reptilians aliens that came to earth and colonized earth had to push away the reptilians. Okay, so then let me, Are let me state heroes? negative. Why do they keep calling them negative? When they were here, that is some no one. Oh my god, no wonder they were nor they were Nordic. 
They were some white ass dudes <laughs> yeah, oh no, colonizing 100%. another place, and it's a tradition we kept alive. Well, well, well. <laughs> you think you think racism came from Earth, dude? Are you crazy? No, <laughs> clearly, clearly it came this- from the Galactic Federation, which hashtag not my federation is much more racist than the one that we know and love already. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe the negative one is <sighs> the good one. It's a good Maybe. Not a, but their vibrations are low vibrations. I'm letting the low lizard people know. I will bad. fight with. I will. I will join in their native metaphor to fight against the occupational uh, empire, empire metaphor. I will join them. Oh my god! Don't get us in trouble, Jesse. I'll join Not you, the lizard reptilians. people. <laughs> so I'll paint my face in a respectful way, and <laughs> I'll, I'll get my own Academy Award for it. It'll be great. My own Academy Award, dude. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) So the secret societies, among others, were in the Roman Empire, colonialism, the regime of Pol Pot in Cambodia, and Nazism were a result of these secret societies looking to wipe away this history. In particular, the discovery of America and the systemic, uh, systematic extermination of tens of millions of descendants of Atlantis in North and South America and the Caribbean that followed were a genocidal program that's hardly... Hardly paralleled in world history. It's this is reductive one bullshit. Big con. No, yes. this is reductive bullshit. It's all one big con, baby. This is one reductive, con, and it makes us not take uh, what we did to people seriously. This is bullshit. No. Don't listen to this. <laughs> uh, Jesse is un, uh, is uh, entirely correct on this, but. But this is what these people believe, and that's why it must be put forward. <laughs> that's how I feel all the time, Mathis. Don't worry. <laughs> Some traces were hard to erase, though, such as the racist, the rhesus negative blood many Atlantean descendants across the world have. Blood type O. Their red and blonde hair and their DNA, of course, because they have red and blonde hair, their DNA and the languages they speak. For example, the language of the ma- of the Native American tribes along the Amazon in Brazil, called Tupe Guarani, shows a remarkable amount of similarities to the languages in the Basques in Spain and France. The Atlanteans that settled down in northern Africa named the mountains there after their own mountain, the Atlas. And even now, some words in the language of their descendants, the Berbers, match those in, for example, Basque. The same applies to the language in, of the Sioux Native American tribe in North America, native peoples in Guatemala, and the original inhabitants of the Canary Islands named Guanches, which were completely eliminated by the Spaniards under the directive of the secret society to wipe out what remaining Atlanteans and what history they still had off the face of the earth. Brutal. Many burial... <laughs> Many burial rituals of people across the world are also familiar or similar. Mummification of bodies in the fetus position, the fetal position, such as on the Canary Islands in Peru and in Egypt, and the use of ochre red colors often play a prominent role as they used to in Atlantis. In many animals, Atlantis still exists in the collective consciousness. There are migratory birds, for example, such as the petrel, which still fly to parts of Atlantis that used to be above water every year. They circle around here for a long time as though they know there should be a place to land somewhere. There is also a butterfly species named the Catopicilia, which leaves for a journey across the ocean from French uh, Guiana every year. Their subconscious probably still contains the memory of an island far out in the sea with an unprecedented abundance of flowers filled with nectar for them to sustain themselves. But once they arrive, I'm sorry, I'm laughing because Jesse's head just doesn't stop shaking. I just, I don't know. (laughs) Just keep going. Yeah, absolutely. We're almost there. We're almost done. But once they arrive at this place and there's nothing to be found, they become disoriented. Sorry, hiccup. Oh, another one. After fluttering about for a while longer, exhaustion kicks in and they die on the waves one by one. According to my favorite, according to channeled, channeled sources, Many souls that experienced the fall of Atlantis at that time have now reincarnated. In this way, they solve all sorts of karma and have the opportunity to bring about the transition to a new era properly this time. One of these former Atlanteans is the author Shirley Andrews. 
You may know that name if you're familiar with this kind of garbagey writing. Although we consulted various books uh, during our research for Atlantis, uh, her book at, in, in particular, Atlantis Insights from a Lost Civilization to Many, stand out. But I personally, you know, hand in the air, did not read this because it wasn't the focus of what I was trying to do in this episode. But we have, I have an excerpt from, um, we, we have a, a, an excerpt from an end page in her book that we can read here. Quote, although they lived long ago, Atlanteans were in essence the same as us. They were equally intelligent, laughed and smiled, loved, became frustrated and angry, or chased a goal with determination. They could count and calculate, make estimates and make plans, and they thought about past, present, and future. For thousands of years, the strong spiritual people that inhabited Atlantis after the, the destruction of 28,000 years ago worked on the preservation of a balanced and harmonious civilization. They were aware of the relationship between them and a spiritual creature of a higher order, and religion and maintaining the beautiful nature in which they lived were central in their actions. Once they had reached the point that they only needed a few hours a day in order to fulfill their daily needs, they devoted themselves to enjoying each other's companionship with love or to contemplation about their role on earth and position among the cosmos. Whatever the truth may be, the history of Atlantis is long lost to us now. But this is all we know of the once great Atlantis civilization long lost to time. Yay! <laughs> and that's the end of part one of Atlantis. Next week, we will discuss much more in depth the true history of Atlantis, actual archaeological research, and Atlantis, though it may not be a true place, might be a reference to places that did exist that was just exaggerated upon for the sake, as Plato tended to do, of making a point, teaching a lesson, and basically creating a parable for his students to learn from. Um, that is going to be a wildly different flavor of episode next week, so I hope you're excited for that one. I love um, all flavors. I, I, we do love all flavors here at Chaluminati Podcast, um, but I don't, want you to, I don't want you to just be left off with like, this is where we're going to end now. <laughs> It's not, As you know, not we always, whenever you start a multi-part episode, you always got to make oh, yeah. sure all the parts pay off before the end of the yeah. multi-parter. You know what I mean? Right. You cannot end in the middle of nothing and leave everybody curious as to how it might end. Sh one day it's in the shameful future. to do that, honestly. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to get that out of there, man. Atlantis is such a fascinating, such a fucking bizarre, uh, a bizarre topic simply because of just how it is historically fascinating when we will talk again, talk about that more next week and what it's really led to in terms of like people's archeological digs and some fascinating things they learned through science. But then where this all spins off into the fucking insane and the UFOs and aliens and because oh, of course aliens are involved in, in all this shit. It really um, is like Assassin's Creed. Like, Oh yeah. It's funny. Time. It's funny because I know they went and like did a little deep dive into some like American Mm -hmm. real old school cultural conspiracy theories and it's so it's almost fun to go play those games having been so submerged into this world because yeah. it's like almost like i made a game for myself based on the lore that i learned from chiluminati you know what i mean it's really it's yeah, really yeah. funny like it's <laughs> kind of a neat little I, uh, thing well the one thing i want to say like there's a lot that's wrong with it obviously um but the the one thing that i think we've talked about in the past is that the idea that human civilization only was able to become what it is today because we come from some greater civilization, the diffusion theory, again, as, as it was called, it, it discredits hum humanity's own ingenuity, that we wouldn't be able to create these pyramids and these temples and these civilizations as they are through our own ingenuity, that they had to come from some greater civilization and that we wouldn't be able to do it on our own and that we are some other water ape from another planet. That stuff is like the stuff that's infuriating because it's the same theory and falls into the same conspiracies that Egypt couldn't have built their own pyramids and aliens had to have helped, right? Or that Stonehenge had to have been done by aliens and humans wouldn't have been able to put it together. It's, it's an insult to our own species that we wouldn't be able to do this shit on our own, that it must have been something else. Um, but um, there are many things wrong with it. That's just kind of where I rest on it. We will be back next week with the final part of Atlantis and the actual history behind its creation and where it is in today's society thank you boys for joining me and thank everybody thank for listening you. 
<laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> Jesse, do we have a uh, a special event coming up? I mean, we do. In October, you can go right now to the Chiluminati Pod website and there get tickets for our live show in October in LA. Come on down. Let's get weird with it. It'll be super fun. And if it's not fun, you know who to blame. Mathis. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll do my part. Like I said, Patreon oh, yeah. folks, all Patreon folks get a guide to places to eat in Los Angeles uh, coming up close to the time. And I'll secretly appear at one of them in between in between the days of the show. Ooh. So how about that? I don't what? That sounds That's fun. very creepy. Yeah, I'll just maybe, like, where's Waldo? You can maybe hang out and have a burger with me. You know what I mean? Like, maybe. I don't want burger it to be place. too much. All right, keep an eye out. It's a burger place. No, no, right. Ooh, no. Burger. It's a burger place. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about burgers, guys. They're so fucking good. All right. They are They are delicious. Yeah. You know what else is good? The mini soda that we're going to go do now. Ooh, so thank yeah. you guys. Ooh. All right, we're going to go do a mini soda. Thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate your support on Patreon. Grab those tickets. Get yourself some merch. And we'll see you next week. Patreon.com slash Bye. 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 Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out of here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky. 